Any human being who gives themselves over to the doing of evil could be considered a devil. Devil mean wicked by nature. They talk about me, but they won't confront me. And that's what America wants, is control over what I say. You're dealing with an enemy that is a murderer from the beginning and a liar, so says Jesus in the book of St. John. That's my business to influence public opinion, especially when liars are deceiving the American people. How could we let the former colonial and slave master bring in vaccines for our people and we don't have scientists or laboratories to look at this and test it to see if it is what is on the label. What is a drone? It's something that flies, no pilot, and it's dropping bombs, killing even American citizens that they say are enemy combatants. I wonder what they got for me. Then we must rise up and kill those who kill us. Stop them and kill them and let them feel the pain of death that we are feeling. So today, whether you like it or not, God brought the idea through me. He didn't bring it through me because my heart was dark and I'm filled with hatred for white people and for the human family of the planet. If my heart were that dark, how is the message so bright, the message so clear, the response so magnificent? It is the divine power of Almighty God, Allah, that is now bringing about the destruction of the United States of America. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jones, for honoring us with your presence. We have watched you as you have watched us, and I have learned a lot from InfoWars and some of the wonderful things that you have done. And I thought long and hard about accepting the invitation. And you're right, I don't do a, a lot of interviews. But I thought that this was something special. And so I wanted you to feel completely free, like you were at home. And I want you to ask me the questions that your many listeners would like to know about Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. And there is nothing off limits. You, you can ask whatever you please and we'll create the dialogue. Uh, thank you for having me in your home uh, and with your family. Driving over here, I talked about some of the reasons that I wanted to interview you. And then when I had a chance to be in your home right before the interview, you basically mirrored uh, what I had to say. So in your own words, I'd like you to really, for the TV viewing audience out there, um, go over some of the interesting things that you had to say to me uh, and to the audience because uh, it just dovetailed exactly where I was going. And I have to say, I don't think I've ever had that happen before with an interview. Uh, so I'm really glad this is uh, happening here today because, as you know, there are forces that are trying to divide and conquer humanity, and we're really coming to a crossroads where people are being told to choose a side, but I don't think the sides they're telling us to choose are real sides. So I'm trying to get people to think outside the box, and when I spoke to you earlier, that was basically your main focus. So I think this interview is meant to happen for a reason, so thank you so much for giving us uh, the time and your busy schedule. Uh, so please, just uh, if, if you could recapture what you told me in there earlier, it was very interesting. 
the idea of dialogue, truthful dialogue that gets us past the media manipulation of persons, events, and the truths of persons and events. I'm grateful to have an opportunity to talk to your audience as well as my own because I felt that I've been talking to black people for 60 or more years and black people understand me pretty well. But white people don't know me and may not understand me. I had a, a Jewish rabbi in my home and he was telling me how certain words that I spoke hurt him and them as a people. And I listened carefully to his critique. One of the things about critics, if you can really listen to your critics, your critics sometimes are better for you than your so-called friends because your friends tell you what they think you want to hear. But a critic will write about you or talk about you in a way that if you have wisdom, you look deep into what your critics say. So I went away from that dialogue with the Jewish rabbi and I started thinking of language and the best and proper use of language to convey ideas. Now, black people, I know because I'm black and I've come up from among my people. But to have a chance now to speak to a white audience, mainly who may be conservative in their culture and thoughts and desires, and for me to be able to represent the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to that group and answer questions that they are interested in hearing a truthful answer to, then by this dialogue and these cameras and looking into each other's eyes and understanding that we are two people interested in truth. We're two people that live in the greatest nation on this earth, but the nation is not now what it could be if truth unfettered would be given to the American people. And perhaps through this dialogue that might happen. Well, that is exactly what I hope to, to try to discuss with you today. So I'm glad that you're you know, basically, I guess in the spirit or in your gut, wanting to go the same direction because this nation is being basically destroyed from within. And while the people of the nation of every race, color, and creed are being played off against each other, these big global multinationals are tax exempt, diplomatic immunity, they can do whatever they want. And then I see the media on both sides of conservative and liberal basically turning it all into a big spectacle, everyone fighting with each other. And there's some real beefs and real issues within that fight. But overall, it's synthetic. Above it uh, are the social engineers who are attacking the family. Doesn't matter what color your family is. Uh, who are attacking our jobs, shipping them overseas. Doesn't matter what color your family is. That are trying to bring in medicalized tyranny and these dangerous vaccines I learned about you know, so many decades ago in your newspaper. And that's been confirmed by medical research to be uh, basically Trojan horses. I mean, there's... There's thousands of issues here, but the bottom line is humanity itself is under attack by the ruling elite, and they are desperately engaged in an attempt to start an artificial revolution in every major nation, not just the United States. They use anthropology in each country 
to decide how to divide people along real lines, real issues, but artificially getting us fighting with each other. So while we're busy fighting with each other, they steal the whole show. And you're one of the only prominent leaders, be they of any you know, race, color, creed, we're all the human race, that addresses that there is a conspiracy. So, in, I mean, in your own words earlier, uh, speaking about conspiracy, I mean, there are millions of people a year are charged around the world with conspiracy to rob banks, conspiracy to commit murder, conspiracy to fraud. But how is it that the power elite, it's impossible that they're in a conspiracy? In uh, the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his great teacher, Master Farad Muhammad, who came to enliven the black people in particular, and raise us from a dead level to give us life spiritually, mentally, morally, economically, intellectually, etc. He taught us that he never used color in this question and answer. He asked the question, who are the 85%? Who are the 10%? And who are the 5%? And in the answers that Mr. Muhammad gave that we study, 85% of the people don't understand the law of cause and effect. And they believe that all of this great wonder is from a mystery God. They don't know that God is as real as you and I sitting across the table from each other. And wherever there is an effect that is real, the cause is just as real, though oftentimes the hidden hand that's manipulating and creating the effect and the circumstances that begin to divide and destroy, this kind of satanic mind is absolutely in control and that satanic mind is hiding with a mask of humanity and civility but now it is gradually being exposed so 10 percent run 85 percent 10 percent are those that are privileged those that are blessed with education and some degree of wealth that 85% don't share. And it doesn't make any difference whether you are white or black or Indian or whatever your ethnicity is, and it doesn't make any difference what your religion is, whether you're Christian or Muslim or Jew. There are those at the top who guide and govern, who are not necessarily the friend of the masses of the people that they are governing. So it is the 5% are just a small group who know the truth, who understand the law of cause and effect, and they don't believe in a mystery God that's somewhere making things happen. If there's a real evil, then there's a real devil. If there's a real saint, a saint then there's a real good person doing saintly things. So here we are. Now a conspiracy absolutely is in vogue. Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. 
It's always been about erasing the